we've got nothing new to report on the Vic. No problem. Here you go. Line of Fire Gun Club, 3727 North Ralston Avenue. She's on her way to interrogation now. That's all I have to say. I do for you officers Las Vegas Crime Lab we have a few questions we need to ask our claim to fame are the public firing lanes we offer 50 feet long patrons can rent weapons from us or bring their own we offer guns for purchase as well and our members get lower prices lower rates on our services we're responsible operation officers. We're all about gun safety here. Offer classes for the whole family. But we also offer a tactical training course to police and military personnel. I'm sure some of your colleagues have utilized our services. For example, our changeable walkthrough course with simulated real-world environments. The only group we had was from a video game company. A small group, just four. But they charged it on a company cot. Actually, yes. You see, people usually come out for one of two reasons. To have a good time, or to do some serious training. These four, well, if I had known what kind of mood they were in, I don't know if I'd have done business with them. They were at each other, really nasty insults, arguments, two in particular. Which couple was, uh, arguing? A young Asian woman and an older guy. Handsome, I'd say. They were in a huge fight. I mean, over the top to where I thought they might come to violence, which is not good in this environment. I came out and told them to get their act together, or they'd be out on the sidewalk where they could fight without guns in their hands. We can check the sign-in sheet for sure, but best I remember, in the evening, around 8 till maybe 10. We are pro-police here at the gun club. You guys are the first line of defense, and we back you all the way. Private lane number one is still in the condition they left it, so, hey, do your thing. A useful list of who had brought what to the party. <laughs> Set of firearms? More like an arsenal. But understand, we don't rent out functioning firearms. Well, they function to a degree, but they're modified for non-lethal pellets. You know, for legal reasons. What kind of non-lethal ammo does it fire? Paint bullets, but not paintball exactly. These are the smaller variety pellets used in high-tech tactical training. These suckers pinpoint. And just because you can't get killed doesn't mean you want one of these paint pellets pelting you. They leave a whale of a welt. No, not without substituting a real barrel onto the weapon. And even then, a special adapter has to be installed. And, well, it would be more trouble than it's worth. And we don't rent the real barrels out, if that's what you're thinking. Seems to me one of them did. But I'm hazy on who, and what caliber the weapon was. I mean, I see so many guns in this place. But it'll be on the sign-in sheet. We're all over it when somebody brings their own gun into our space. Now that you mention the one who seemed to be the boss, fella who paid for the session, Stan Everston, he bought a 45 auto and some ammo for it.
Wow, look at that grouping. That kind of shooting takes considerable practice. Legally purchased in California and registered to me. Why? Did I break some statute or something? It's just Stan and Andy suggested I bring it. Something about getting the team into the reality behind first-person shooting games. Stan knows, knew, I have a gun and know my way around firearms. He thought I could give the gang a few tips. Back in better days, Stan and I shared a kind of warped sense of humor. Maybe I was trying to get that back, or maybe I was just trying to get back at him. But it doesn't matter, because I didn't even shoot it. That was Maya. Hey, uh, I do want to help, but they say a man's home is his castle, and right now, these wheels are all the castle I've got. I know all about my rights, including you needing a search warrant first. That I'll do. I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything. Stan's death is a shock to me. Do your tests. strong connection here. The bullet's a 22, he owns a 22, his shirt is at the scene, and Landers has a bit of history with our Vic. The search warrant will be for a handgun or handgun accessories. Oh, crud. Um, wait, wait. I demand to see a lawyer. I know my rights. You watch too much TV, man. Stay nearby in case we have any questions. Ah yes, the mysterious 22. At last we meet. Looks like this area is clean. Way to be thorough. Scorpion collectors. I just don't get it. Luckily, this is not covered by our warrant. These 22 caliber bullets are the same brand as the ones found in the body. unloaded but the barrel's been tampered with somebody scraped the inside of it maybe they were trying to discourage ballistics matches the gunpowder from Landers 22 matches the second type of powder found on the 45 automatic Striations don't match, which is not a shock, considering the barrel's been tampered with. So I'm not ready to rule this out as the murder weapon. It would be nice to know whether this gun was futzed with before or after the crime. Our ousted game designer either knowingly or unknowingly provided the bullets that killed his former boss. The problem is, somehow all three of our suspects fired these rounds. The electron microscope confirms the gunpowder found on the forehead wound matches all three of our suspects' hands. This definitely muddies the water a little bit. What's up? We have a real mystery here. Let me lay it out for you. We have a 22 caliber bullet that we found in the body. Its GSR matches this box of 22 bullets. 
We also recovered a 22 handgun owned by one of the suspects and have found the same GSR traces on it. Okay. But ballistics don't match, so this weapon didn't actually fire the bullets into the Vic. Sounds like you need to find a different 22. Well, there's one more twist. The 45 handgun we found at the crime scene also has traces of the 22 bullets GSR on its hammer. But, as you know, it can't fire a 22 round. That's true. But didn't I overhear something about modified rifles from the gun range? Yeah, but that's out. It only fired paint pellets. Same concept, Nick. How do you fire a non-standard bullet from a weapon? Modify the weapon. I'd go back to the gun shop and see what else they know. We don't stock them, but they're easy enough to special order. Those kits are fairly popular, because they let you train with less expensive rounds. 22s are way cheaper than 45s, and more common, too. Heck, around here, you can buy 22 cartridges at convenience stores. No, the only thing they bought was bullets. You don't have to be a gunsmith. Anybody who knows his or her way around a gun could do it in a couple of minutes. Don't even need special tools. Would you like to order one? No, thanks. We have our own sources. No problem. I'll pick one out of the wall for you. Hey, I didn't have to go far to get that gun adapter after all. Local police reserves had one. Take this and do your test. Next stop, Ballistics Lab. The microscope is the place for that. Microscope is the place for that. Craig Lander's 22 handgun is the murder weapon. The bullet fired at the gun club does not match the bullets from the victim.
way to interrogation now. Argue is a little strong. We raised our voices, but hell, it's loud in a firing range. I guess maybe I started to kid him, you know, and it got out of hand. Just childish crap, like this insulting text message he sent me the other night. Really pissed me off. Oh, hell, I don't remember. I mean, it's a dead issue, right? Sorry, that sounded bad. I just mean, the guy's gone. Let's cut him a break. So what if I did? Craig plastered that pick on the target. I took aim and showed them my stuff. Gotta give Stan credit. He laughed. For a while. Maybe you guys ought to join the gun club. Me, I was raised around firearms. My dad was ex-military and his big hobby was hunting. Plus, I didn't have any brothers and kind of went the tomboy route to please daddy, who trained me in guns from grade school. But I never could bring myself to shoot animals. So I was strictly a target range girl and I have the medals to prove it. I used my experience to help Andy with his in-game physics simulations. Not that he showed any gratitude. After all, I'm only marketing. He's the coder. Who told you that, Maya? Typical, trying to make me look bad, take the heat off her after she was screaming at Stan, which is why she was having problems with him. You had to know how to handle that guy, and attacking and counterattacking was bad strategy. If you don't mind, let's just get back to the question. Did you ask Stan Everston to buy you a gun? Of course I did. How else could I program a game this realistic without understanding the actual physics of the key weapon? Also, our art staff needed it for reference. Is any of that hard to grasp? Look, I never shot anything more real than a super soaker. Not that Stan took much convincing. He'd been wanting to buy a gun for himself for some time. He had a genuine paranoid streak. Only, now that he's a murder victim, he doesn't seem quite so paranoid, I guess. Since the start of the company, I was the first guy he hired. He could be a tough guy to work for, but we were also friends. Anyway, it was his dough and his contacts in the biz that got the company off the ground. Of course, it was my contribution, my game code, that made the company a player. I write the programming code. Back in the early days, programmers like me were God. We designed the games, created the artwork, did all the programming. Only as the industry's grown, it's got more specialized. So my code is still what makes it all happen. I am Gut Wrench 3. Well, like I said, leave isn't exactly the word. The dude was canned. And he hasn't been able to land a job ever since, and it's been months. He's living out of his damn car, you know. Craig didn't mention being fired. You sure he didn't leave on his own? Dude, I was there. It was a raving blowout between those two. As for what was behind it, well, we were all working on Craig's little game, Fuzzy and Bill. We slaved on it for months and months, and it sold squat. It was total hard drive crash to Craig's ego when Stan pulled the plug on the promised sequel. Canceling the game was a shock, but Craig held on, thinking he could design Gut Wrench 3. All through development, those two were at each other's throats. And last night, they picked up right where they left off, Screaming Match City. We were at the demo booth, getting it ready, and I took a break. Shouldn't have left those two alone, I guess. I could hear them yelling at each other, really tearing each other bloody gaping new ones. Oh, I'd forgotten about that. I do remember Stan bitching about his foot itching. He said he'd got a couple of wasp stings just before he flew out here. Not his weekend, huh? I've divulged everything I can think of.
The striations on the spent bullets are similar, but not exact, to those found in Everston's body. This is not surprising, since our adapter clearly didn't shoot him. We need to find the actual adapter to confirm it. I'll get my boys to start searching for it immediately. Check back later. She's on her way to interrogation now. They had a lot of history before I got there, you know? Like, they had tension sometimes, but there was also a bond. Almost like they could read each other's minds or something. By the end of the project, they were mostly staying out of each other's way. And, you know, maybe I'm out of line for saying this, but I don't know why Stan trusted the guy. Word around the office was, Andy's an old school hacker. What kind of old school hacker? The kind who likes to break into stuff. Recently, I let him install a version of GutWrench 3 on my computer. Only since then, my machine's been working really, really slow. Andy says he did nothing, but... I think he accessed my files. No. I know Craig wanted his job back. Maybe my looks and charm weren't the only thing Craig saw in me. Maybe he also wanted to know about the state of office politics. Anyway, in his car we were griping about Stan, and Craig told me he tried to talk to Stan back at the convention center, but that it hadn't turned out so hot. divulged everything I can think of. I don't have anything for you right now. can do with that item. Where didn't I argue with Stan? We fought like brothers, I told you that. Why? Did that creep Andy say... Look. It's no big deal. I don't know what Penmore's problem is anyway. Hell, I'm the one on the outside. He's the one with part ownership of LZP now. He was the new brother. Replaced me in Stan's heart and company. Technically, I was fired. But let's just say I already had my desk cleared out. Why does that matter? What was the reason you were fired? The real reason or the stated one? Because, you see, officially, I wasn't a good fit with the new vision of the company. But really... It was our disagreement about the future of LZP, and my desire to have a little goddamn responsibility about who we were selling our products to. The pisser is, oh, and I get so steamed just thinking about it. I, I trusted him when we set things up, so he wound up owning my intellectual property, and I'm left at square one. I created the original Fuzzy and Bill online comic years ago, way before LZP. Then I sold Stan the full commercial rights for a dollar, on the understanding that he would make it into a game, with me in for a big share as an employee of LZP. We published, the game didn't sell big, but it had a following. Stan decided to bury Fuzzy and Bill, not just the video game, all other merchandising too, just to put me in my place. There the property sits, still at LZP, and here I sit, out of work and no way to make a nickel on my own creation.
What? Oh, that. Uh, it'll sound lame, but I was out in the desert catching scorpions the other day. Little critters scurry around the rocks, you know, and these are my uh, red badges of stupidity. You telling me you actually got into a fist fight would sound less lame. You can save us a step by letting us take an impression of your ring. We can get a warrant. Easy, but... I got nothing to hide. Actually, I got nothing, period. <laughs> Let's see what Doc Robbins has to say about this. The bruising patterns match up to these markings. Also, the bruise had a very large white blood cell count, which only happens when the person hit is alive. That means this ring struck Stan Everston before he died. Actually, no, but uh, I should be soon. Stan promised me a piece of the corporate pie because of my stellar work on Gut Wrench 3. It's not supposed to happen till the game's complete and on the shelves. That'll be delayed because of this tragedy. We, we didn't have anything in writing, but there were witnesses to our oral contract. But I'm not the only one who was promised a payday. Let me give you a different file, one that I think you'll be more interested in. It's on my PDA. Press coverage of Gut Wrench 3 is tied to Maya Wynn's payday. The bigger the media splash, the bigger her bonus. However, note that it was encrypted. Andy didn't just get this forwarded, he hacked it. She's on her way to interrogation now. That's all I have to say. Craig had his hands on the weapons case. Another potential link to the crime scene. Sure. Let's bring in the guy whose ring matches our Vic's chest.
Well, you tell me, detective. I let all of them, Maya, Andy, even Stan, fire my gun that night. Any of them could have screwed with it. Hey, you don't think one of them's trying to frame me for this thing, do you? Well, I think we can safely rule Stan Everston out, but I can see why you'd be pissed at Stan the man. Cancels your pet project, fires you, and keeps ownership of a company you built as much as he did. Every game company has conflicts between the creative and business side, okay? Producers like Stan don't look at a monitor and see the energy and the brilliance that go into a great game. All they see is a damn spreadsheet. He didn't hold a gun to my head and make me sell my intellectual property to him. That was my stupid fault. Well, during the party, Andy told Stan that there were new bugs with the game, and Stan, being the predictable control freak he was, had to go there and hunt down the bugs personally. He would have stayed there all night if he needed to. Not begging. Look, it was all business for Stan, and I was talent, and damn good talent. I figured he'd be able to look past our differences and see how I could positively impact his bottom line. And, hey, I admit, I thought that maybe after Gut Wrench 3 came out, we could revive Fuzzy and Bill again. How did that go over with Stan? Not so good. I pushed too hard, and we both said things that that old friend should never have said. He said LZP had outgrown me, and and I accused him of bad-mouthing me in the industry to where I couldn't even get a low-end job. I admit it. Okay, I admit it. It got a little ugly. I accused him of exploiting every worst instinct in the gaming market, selling violence and sex, made all the worse by killing the very game that could have provided a fun alternative. And if he wasn't going to do Fuzzy and Bill, couldn't he at least sign it back over to me? He just laughed. So that's when you threatened Stan? Hoping to scare him into giving you Fuzzy and Bill back? He didn't back down. He didn't punch him. He took it. And then ripped your shirt as you flipped. But you went back for your gun instead. With Stan gone, LZP returned to you. You'd put the company back on track. You got it half right anyway. I took a swing at that prick. And I'm guilty of getting my butt kicked by the guy after. I just picked up what little was left of my dignity, and I went back to my car. She's on her way to interrogation now. From day one, it was part of the job offer that convinced me to sign up with LZP. I had offers from two other companies, both bigger, you know, but this was a real opportunity to make my mark. And a box of money. Why would a marketing person rate bigger money than the creative side? Marketing is king in the entertainment world. And the game industry is an increasingly bigger part of that world, with marketing campaigns that run to the millions. More sometimes than goes into the game themselves. A great game that sits on a shelf is a flop. A weak game that flies off the shelves is a win. And we're looking at a crime scene that seems designed by a marketing whiz. Aimed at generating a lot of press. Vic posed like the body on the game's poster. It's genius, really. And here you are with a sweetheart contract tying national press to your bonus. Nicely done, Ms. Wynn. With your expertise as a competition shooter, you know all about weapon adapters. Then you heard about Craig and Stan getting into it, so you seized the moment. Killing your pain of a boss, posing him for the inevitable press coverage, placing the assault rifle just right, though leaving a nasty little print behind. Then back to your hotel room. You're right. The killer did me a favor. And I'll probably make money because of the way that crime scene was staged. But I didn't stage it, and I didn't kill Stan. But maybe I can help you. Why don't you take a look at a file I downloaded for you about Andy Penmore? It's on my flash drive. You might get somewhere with it. Let's run this evidence by brass. Catherine gave me the heads up on this development. Our convention center security pals used a metal detector around where that cell phone was recovered. Here's your adapter. Oh, you're gonna love this. 
Turns out both of these items were within 30 feet of Lander's car. Next stop, Ballistics Lab. Yeah, and that's our murder weapon. Back together again for this special encore performance. suggests that Andy Penmore had possession of Stan Everston's cell phone. And now we have Andy's fingerprint on the gun adapter, tying him to the murder weapon. Andy's prints are on the Vic cell phone and on the murder weapon adapter. Time to stop all the games and play for real. Let's arrest this guy. As much more try eight days in a row my eyes are burning right now from sitting at a monitor making this game fly was that what you bargained for actually yes everybody in the game industry knows that long hours is part of the deal I'm in this field because I love it I'm a lucky guy making games for a living what is this some stupid attempt to entrap me it's no fake Andy well then Stan Everston was a fake if this is true, he was planning to renege on my piece of the action. Bastard lied to me. If I'd have known this, you really would have a right to look at me as a murder suspect. But I didn't know, and I didn't kill him. Oh, I'd like to strangle his ass right now. Well played, Andy. But a gifted hacker like you? You've known about that email all along. You're reaching, but you aren't touching anything. Read my lips. I never saw this stupid thing before. Anyway, when Stan was killed, my stake in the company hadn't kicked in yet. What would I have gained killing that liar? You didn't have a stake yet, and you found out you never would. Not unless you removed Stan and brought in witnesses who heard his oral contract to you. Andy, we found the cell phone, we know about the adapter, and your prints are on it. Then there's the little matter of you being the last one to see Stan Everston alive. I wasn't the last one to see him alive. The killer was. You don't play this game at all well, guys, but good luck to you. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Am I free to go? How could I do that from my hotel room, which is where I was when he was killed? Sure you were. There's no proof of that, by the way. Just flimsy setups from you to make us think you were there. If that's the best you can do, I can't wait to see you try to build a case on air like this in court. You're right. We don't have the evidence we need, but we have a lot of testimony. Help us find the real killer since you're innocent and all. I see. You pretend to ask for my help when you really want me to try to incriminate myself, give you false testimony on facts so you can trip me up. If I don't, then I'm unwilling and you hold me longer. So, on game, I'll help you. Okay, well then, who convinced Stan into inviting Craig, persona non grata, to the gun club party? I did. I don't deny that. Who also told Craig to bring his own 22? Who ensured Stan bought and brought his 45. Who researched how weapons work in the real world? Who told Stan there was a last minute problem with the game, ensuring he would stay late at the demo center? I did, but none of that means I killed him, of course. Well, I'm just getting started. Who knew that an adapter for both a 22 and a 45 would be needed for this coincidence? Who knew Maya not only had a PR bonus, but was also an expert shot? 
Who was ready with flimsy alibis when the others decided to hook up on an accidental meeting? Uh... Who set this whole thing up months in advance the minute you found that email telling you your payday was gone the way of floppy disks? You can't prove that. Let me walk you through what we can prove, thanks to your help. By ensuring both the 45 and the 22 would be at the club, you could grab a few of Craig's bullets. When you told Stan there were problems with the game, he gave you the 45 and the ammo to take back to the room while he went to the convention center. You walked through the lobby so the cameras could see you, entered the room, ordered your movie, modified the gun, and then snuck out. Once in the demo room, you cranked up the game audio and shot Stan twice in the chest and once in the head. Then, you staged the crime scene to potentially throw blame on Maya or maybe just some disgruntled fan. You also turned down the air conditioning to further confuse the time of death. You switched out the adapter, wiped the 45 clean, and returned it to the gun case. Then you grabbed Stan's cell and punched in your second alibi and bolted back to your room to order that alibi salad. You wiped off the phone and adapter, and the next morning, you ditched him near Craig's car. Easy to find, right? However, in your haste, you left partial prints on both items. Then it was off to the convention, from one con right into another. You see, Andy, we're not trying to get you to incriminate yourself. You said that you'd help us. The truth is, we don't need anything from you. We know what you did, and we know how you did it. Combined with all the physical evidence we got on you, we have everything we need. No, you'll never make this play in court. This murder was all a game to you, wasn't it? But there was a glitch in your programming. It's your sick ego. And that's a bug you'll never get out of your system. That was an interesting case. It's funny. Andy tried so hard to control every detail to cover up his involvement. And since you uncovered that every detail was controlled by him, that was the break we needed. Physical evidence is strong, but it's the context of that evidence to the events that makes it the strongest. Well done. Let's move on to your case evaluation.